Welcome to this episode of Mystery Bible. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. In this episode, we're going to focus on angels. I wanted to take some time and focus on the types of angels that the Bible talks about, as well as angels that the book of Enoch talks about. And then we're going to, from this, we're going to go into the Watchers, and then we're going to talk about the Nephilims and so forth. But I wanted to... Um, to go back and take a, a, a look at the types of angels that are mentioned in the Bible. The Bible mentions several types of angels. It also calls a few by name. I want to take a look at that and so that we can have a better understanding of who they are, their positions, uh, what they do, because they're not just floating around in the air like uh, people think they are with wings and all this kind of stuff. There are several different types of angels that the Bible talks about and some things that to do Michael and Gabriel, God's messenger. And Michael has to deal more with a war. The Bible goes and talks about the angel of the Lord and who is the angel of the Lord, seraphims and all these different types of angels. So, and the book of Enoch also deals with angels and, um, you need to, guys, you need, uh, and I've said it many times before, you need to get a copy of uh, the book of Enoch. There's a couple of book of Jasper is another that you need to get, and the book of Jubilee. You need to get a copy of these books because they will help you better understand uh, the scriptures. The book of Jubilee and, and Jasper, they give you a behind-the-scenes look at some of the stories that are mentioned in the Bible. Um and Jacob and Esau, and it tells you what Esau was doing and why he was late. He actually was in, he was running and hiding because he had killed one of the giants, one of the Nephilims. And so uh, you need to go and take a look at that. I get it when what people were saying about it has to be inspired by God, but my thing is this. If, it's, if it was good enough for Jesus to be quoting from it and the early church and the disciples to be quoting from it, then it's good enough for me to be quoting from it. And so I don't know who or what give them the right to um, to deem these books not a part of a quote-unquote Christianity and they are hiding it from us, but they have a lot of information that will make things so much simpler for you and I. And so I'm going to plug those books over and over again. Get copies as we begin to look deeper into certain aspects in, in who the, watch, the watchers are, who the Nephilims are, their names of the Nephilims. They have tons of their names and what they, their deeds and so forth. You know, the Bible talks about the mighty men. Uh, so we're going to go into that, not in this episode, but coming episodes, the ne Nephilims as well, and uh, the watchers. But in this one, we're going to take a look at the angels, the heavenly host, the scripture calls them, the sons of God, all these different names that the Bible talks about, who they are. And so we're going to um, uh, do some study and we'll be right back after this message. Uh, we are continuing to study about angels. Uh, the Bible tells us in um, Job's chapter uh, 38 verses 1 through 7 that... Um, the angels were present when God was creating the earth and um, uh, tells us uh, that uh, they sang um, uh, together when the earth was created. There's a couple of things we're going to talk about it as, you know, um, so we know that they were created by God. We know that they were created before the earth. Um, uh, it tells us also that, uh, uh, that they exist and they do not experience death. And we see that in Luke chapter uh, 20, verses uh, 36. Uh, we talk, we know that uh, the Bible tells us that they do not marry. And that's in Matthew 22, verses uh, 30. We know that they are uh, intelligent and they are wise creatures. And we see that in Second Samuel 14, 17 and Daniel 9, 22. Uh, we know that uh, they are interested in uh, humans of human affairs. That's all through the scriptures. We know it. We could see that from the story with in the book of Daniel, uh, also in Luke 15. Um, we know that uh, they are spiritual beings. The Bible calls them 
uh, the host of heavens, the sons of God. And the Bible also tells us that they were in Revelations that they were created to worship God and um, also to serve uh, mankind. Um, it tells us in the scriptures that, uh, and I talk a little about that, that scripture, when it says in Psalms that God made us, made us a little lower than Elohim. Um, and uh, they said in that scripture, it talks about angels a little lower than angels, but that's not the correct interpretation of that scripture. The original says that God made us a little lower than Elohim, which is God. That's who we are. And the Bible tells us in uh, the book of Hebrews of uh, who they are, that the scripture tells us that they are are not all ministering sp uh, uh, spirits, angels sent forth to minister on behalf of us. So they are there to minister on our behalf. And that is found in, in Hebrews chapter uh, verses 14. It says that the angels are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, uh, for those who will inherit salvation. The Bible tells us, goes on to tells us that their number is innumerable. We have no idea how much, uh, how many they are. And, um, I mean, that is all through scriptures. We, we talk about it. Um, I think in Psalm 60, 68, 17, it reads, it calls them the chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. Um, and, uh, I think also Hebrews 12, 22 talks about <clears throat> how, um, but you have come to the Mount Zion, to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angel in joyful assembly. So when the Bible tells us that there are so many, it's also in, in the Psalms about how many these angels are. But out of that, one third of them sided with Lucifer, who became um as a result of his fall from grace the bible talks of a couple of different angels it mentions in the bible itself it only mentions three particular angels the first one was gabriel michael and the third was lucifer and so in the bible that we study that's uh, those are the three that were mentioned and um out of the three only one is really called an archangel and that is michael and the bible tell calls him he's uh, described as one of the chiefs chief princes so if he's one of the chief princes it means that there are others so but uh, he's the only one that um, is mentioned in the bible as uh, uh, the chief one of the chief princes and the word archangel in the hebrew i mean the, the greek just simply means um chief angel the bible also tells us that they they report to god the father tells us in job when they came before him uh, even uh, uh lucifer came before him uh when he was presenting himself before the father when he accused job you know uh, uh of of god accused god of of protecting job and so there are other angels in the scripture there are all kinds of titles as i mentioned to you that they are called they're called messengers, they're called watchers, they're called hosts, the sons of the Almighty, sons of God, chariots. These are all just names of um, the angels and uh, um, of God. The hosts, the hosts of heaven, they're called as well. Uh, these are different names that we have. I mentioned to you that um, there's only three. Michael, we'll talk a little. Michael is mostly mentioned. He's in the Old Testament a couple of times, and he makes his appearance. And I know in the book of Daniel, I believe he did that. He showed up twice. Uh, I know Gabriel had mentioned Michael uh, also when he, Gabriel mentioned that Michael was the one that was fighting against the prince of Persia. So uh, Gabriel was the one who delivered the, the message to Daniel. Um, Michael also appears in, I believe, in in uh, twelve Daniel twelve one, when uh, the Bible tells that he is uh, protecting uh, the uh, Israel nation from spiritual attack. Um, 
Jude one nine also talks about a story of um, he makes a, a, an appearance when uh, um, uh, the devil was attempting to get in, uh, to blast the devil was trying to get him to uh, blaspheme God over uh, the body of Moses and Michael simply rebuke him. I know that people always try to assume or to make the devil God's equal. And that's something that how can the devil be equal with God when God created him? We need to sometimes step out of our madness and begin to take logically and look at the situation. And so it gets me a little, it irks me a little when people assume that, that Lucifer is equal with God or try to say that he is. I think more his, his counterpart, I would say, would be more like Michael. And Michael kicked his butt and kicked him out of heaven. And God had nothing to do with it because even Jesus said, he said, I saw Lucifer fell like a, uh, uh, like a, you know, star in the heavens. So Jesus was not involved in it. God was not involved in it. He rebelled and Michael handled that situation. And so he's not even, I mean, Michael will be his equal in a way, but he's not even equal to Michael because Michael uh, took him out. So uh, the other types of angels that the Bible talks about is the cherubims and seraphims. And those are, uh, the cherubims are angels that are associated with holiness. They are the ones that place at the entrance of the Garden of Eden after man fell. Uh, these are the angels that also, um, the Ark of the Angel, they're, they're synonymous with the Ark of the Angel. The other um, and that's in Exodus uh, twenty-five, eighteen. We'll talk about uh, the um, the cherubims and uh, what uh, you know they they are, how they look, and so forth. The other is the seraphims, and these uh, angels are very interesting, um, and they are mentioned in Isaiah six, verses through two to seven. And it's very fascinating of uh, who they are and uh, how they look. And um, uh, it's, uh, I mean, some of these uh, creatures, these angels are, are something else, man. They, you know, they are faithful to God. But these guys, uh, they have a certain look to them that the Bible talks about in Isaiah and how they look. And uh, they have their, their wings. And... Um, the six wings, um, and they sing to God continually. They talk about, uh, you know, uh, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, the whole earth is full of his glory. Uh, this is in Isaiah 6, 3. Um, they, uh, I mentioned in, also in Isaiah 6, 2, 7, you'll see a mention of them. The cherubims, uh, as I mentioned, they ordered, they, they guard the Garden of Eden, that's in Genesis chapter, I think it's Genesis chapter 324. It tells us also God is enthroned uh, above them in Ezekiel chapter uh, 10, verses 1 through 22. Psalms 18, 10 tells that God rides on them. So the cherubim, the golden figure in the covenant, they, they, they are... Um, they sit on the Ark of the Covenant. And so they are the ones that the Bible talks about. You have, the Bible goes on to tell us that they have a hierarchy. There's a system to them. They are ranked in orders. So as mentioned, I believe that's mentioned in the book of Jude, chapter uh, Jude 9, and um, where Michael is called the, the Ark Angel or the Chief Angel that he has over or the chief uh, one of the princes of uh, of of uh, in the angel and um we mentioned to you that the bible also talks about there's another doesn't mention by name but the is called the angel it always says the angel of the lord and um every time we see that that believed in the church and teaches that that is jesus um that any time we see that, uh, that is that Jesus, that was a representative of, of who Jesus was. So anytime in the Old Testament you read that, you'll see, and that where God the Father sent the angel, he's typically 
the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's mentioned several times through the Bible. The angels are not omnipresent. And that's why I'm saying to you guys, the devil is not equal to God, guys. God the Father, God is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Satan, people give this guy too much credit, um, you know, but he is a leader of a fallen sect. That is a third of the angels that fell with him, but that's it. But the Bible tells us that um, we, as the gods of this universe, have the authority over him. It was restored to us through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus stripped him of all of the all of his powers in front of every single angel so that is sitting there before him all of his fallen people is so that he's that he has absolutely no power whatsoever and then god jesus gave us the authority over him and so we should not be afraid of him or whatever but angels are here to serve us as shown in hebrews chapter 1 verse you know tells us that uh, they're all here for us so they basically are here to carry out God's plan. Even Satan in his fall, God said in, in Genesis that he will send, that he will put enmity between him and man and that there's someone coming in the bloodline that will bruise his head and so forth. So after that, he and his fallen angels set out plans to try and destroy that seed and he did. he failed at that. You know, they're here, they're designed to, to worship God and to do his bidding. And even, I believe, everything that the enemy does, Lucifer does, it's still within the plan. God is going to use all of his action against him. Because just like the scripture says, the heart of the king is in the hand of God, for God to move it through back and forth. So is everything that Lucifer does. He will never conquer and so anything that God has. But, um, you know, as we we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and go a little more uh, about them and their purpose here and how they fit into the plan of God in relations to your life and in my life. We're going to talk about some testimonies about people that have seen angels. They, I know the scripture talks about how he, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit appear to Abraham in a form of a man. And so when they, because they are of different material, in order for us to see, they then take on the form of a man so that we, they can communicate with us. But we'll take a look at um, some of what they do in our life and how it relates to us. We'll be right back after this message. Welcome back to Mystery Bible. We are talking about angels um, um, and who they are and what they have done and how they relate to us as humans. Um, I know that angels are, they're mentioned in the Bible uh, about 273 times. And uh, uh, the Bible talks about them, about how they work with us, how they, um, you know, a part of us, our lives, and so forth. I was briefly going through some of who they are, the archangels, the cherubims, the seraphims. But the Bible also mentioned living creatures. Ezekiel and Revelation speak of another kind of beings that are called living creatures and that are around God's throne. They we're seeing in Ezekiel 1, 5 through 14, Revelations 4, 6 to 8. And... Um, they are appear to look um, very strange. Uh, they have a head of lion, an ox, a man, an eagle. That uh, all these different types of animals, and, and you know, and, and birds and and stuff. But they worship God continually. The Bible tells us, a day and night, they never cease to sing, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty," uh, who is and is to come revelation 4 8 and that's the living creatures that's what they do um uh, continually uh, day in and day day out we mentioned that the bible only mentions uh two two angels by name which is gabriel and michael and michael was the only one that was called an archangels 
but uh, the Bible says that he's one of the main princes. So if he's one of the main princes, then the assumption is that there are more than one. I know that other ancient texts uh, talks about archangels. One is Raphael is mentioned in one of the ancient texts. Uh, and the Tobit talks about, uh, the Tobit indicates that there are seven archangels that exist and that Raphael is one, Gabriel is another, Jophiel, he's one, and that is, he's mentioned in the Jewish Kabbalic uh, lore, and that's actually, I believe, it's a, it's a woman. The other is Uriel. Um, Uriel is mentioned in seven events, you know, in ancient texts as one of the guardians of the uh, the Garden of Eden. He's also mentioned in the, um, another book is Edras. Uh, I think is uh, the second Edras 4, 1 to 8, talks about uh, how um, Ariel gives um, a riddle uh, to show how God, uh, humans can't phantom God's ways. Um, Azrael is another angel. They call him the angel of death. Um, they believe that he's the angel of death that um, walked through Egypt. Um, Shamuel is another uh, that is mentioned. In, again, these are mentioned in ancient texts outside of the Bible. But uh, uh, I just wanted to bring those to your attention as well. And we talked about the cherubims and the seraphim. And uh, there's really some interesting information about them. Uh, all the different angels. They have books out there that people are angelology that are much more knowledgeable about angels than, than I am. And um, I suggest, again, the Bible tells us to study to show our self-approve so that we can become miniature experts so that we can do the will of God. We wanted to, I talked a little about what they, um, that there are many of them. And um, the Bible tells us that they do several things on our behalf. They guard and protect us. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us in Psalms 91, verse 11 to 12, talks about how God, you know, his angels guard and protect us. And that's where we get the, um, the you know, that guardian, guardian angels. Psalms 91, 11 to 12, it says, um, uh, that uh, uh, they, he will give his angel charge over us to guard us in all of our ways. And so uh, it says, on their hands they will bear us up, lest we would dash our feet against a stone. Um, and again, those are the guardian angels. We see that that's in book of Matthew as well, 1810. Um, and so this uh, teaching um, is seen through, uh, uh, they present, they come, they came to the disciples, they freed Peter out of prison. Um, uh, they showed up in many different ways, places in the Bible, and they are here to protect and to serve you and I. Uh, another thing that they teach us that they are here for, to guard, they communicate God's message. They bring message from God to us. And that's why they're called God's messengers. And all through the scriptures, you see Daniel and, and the, the disciples and all, uh, men and women all through the Bible. The um, Bible tells us also that they, they observe you and I. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 9, that they, 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 their eyes are upon us. And... Um, uh, the Bible tell, teaches us that they also come to encourage us. Um, and uh, we saw that many times. Uh, Second Thessalonians 1.17 talks about that. Uh, Matthew 28.2 talks about that as well. Um, we talked about how they're here to deliver us, um, which is in Hebrews chapter 1.14. They're here to deliver us from harm. Uh, I mentioned earlier that they are here to minister to all those who are heirs of salvation, those who confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us also that they care for us at, uh, when we die. We know that uh, uh, the story of, of Lazarus and in Luke 16. And so, uh, um, you know, 
uh, these are just some of the things that they are. And uh, we are in a time that uh, we are going to need them to accomplish, to uh, work with us, to get things finished that we must do. We are here to um, to do what I've mentioned to you guys before in, uh, in uh, Isaiah 61, where Jesus, he gets up and he speaks his, his ministry, and then we are to do the rest when you read those, those scriptures. Um, but the angel, uh, Lucifer, is not more powerful than God. They are powerful in many ways, but they're not powerful than God. Uh, Lucifer is not more powerful than God. If God created all the angels, how can he become more powerful than God? He's not omnipresent. God is. He's, he can only be at one place at a time. Um, <clears throat> you know, so um, yeah. I... I Again, as I mentioned, it just I can't understand why people put him in that place that he's fighting God and whatever. He's against God's plan. What was God's plan? God's plan was to have us being the gods of this universe and this world, and he's jealous of it because he made a statement that I want to become the God. He want I want to be just like God, and he makes this statement, and then God creates this creature and give him all that power. And so he became jealous. And uh, this uh, operation that is happening on this planet is that we are being restored back to that. And so I'm excited to continue to learn more and to grow at our site. We're going to dig deep into the different aspects of the Watchers and the other um, types of angels and um principalities and powers the bible also talks us about tells us about those types of angels but those are always in relationship to lucifer the bible tells us that we rest not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places and so those um, authorities of angel position is always in reference to um and to his um his set of structure that he has in place. And so that's who we wrestle against, but we are not alone. Uh, we do have help. I remember the angels are here to support us and to help us accomplish all of God's plans and to help us to become who we are and uh, to walk in this journey and so that uh, you and I can be effective for this world. We are here and we just took a brief study about angels and again this was just a brief overview um, there's much more to it a lot of people have done more studies than i and i suggest that you take a look and grab some of those books amazon has tons of them i know i've read several of those but i didn't want to go really deep into to them today i want to just give you a quick overview what i really want to go deep into is our next couple of podcast coming up and that is about the watchers and the nephilims because those need to be talked about so until next time let's uh, get out there and become effective for thank you for listening to mystery bible let's walk through the bible and learn of god and his beautiful mercies and all that he has provided for us that we may become effective for his kingdom and change this world check in every week for a new episode, search for Mystery Bible on Anchor FM, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Breaker, Radio Public, and many more.